Uh, Dr. Kreitzer is a founding member of the Bhaktivedanta Institute of Higher Studies here in Gainesville. Uh, Don't. He's a founding cheerleading member of the Bhaktivedanta Institute for Higher Studies here in Gainesville. He worked uh, very closely with Sataputta Prabhu and um, pursued graduate studies at the University of Florida in the history of science, receiving a PhD in 2013. And he established the Richard L. Thompson Archives with Bob Cohen and Prishni and others to facilitate um, sort of, uh, access to Sataputta's work. He teaches American history and the history of science at Santa Fe College and at the University of Florida. And he will be talking to us today about a Porva Paksha approach as a contemporary hermeneutical exercise. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a uh, uh, Purva Paksha. And we tripped into this uh, from the Cosmo 3 workshop. Uh, Edwin Bryan was talking a little bit there at the end and uh, wrapping up like a cluning thought. Advaita Prabhu, who taught at Rutgers for many years, um, maybe still does sometimes. Um, and uh, that, that sounded like a cool term, sounded a little Italian, you know, per paksha. So I, I like that. Um, but he was, um, he gave it a little, uh, anyways, it's, it's something about this rich debate, this rich culture and tradition of debate within the Indo uh, South Asian tradition and how the BI was entering into that. And I thought that was very soaring, inspiring. So I went to look into it. Um, uh, you know, what does it mean? And maybe we can, we were trying to get together a little, uh, a journal here, just something to put out some of the work and, and presentations at the various conferences. So I think maybe that's a cool word. And uh, yo, yeah, well, there it is. We put it up. We did use it. Now these are pretty humble projects. We're just uh, taking. It's mostly uh, presentations, and uh, um, yeah, it's mostly just the transcripts of the presentation. If someone has an extra essay they'd like to share, we'll put it in too. Um, and, and we're cleaning up the transcripts. So it's just something to show someone uh, who might be interested. Uh, this is some of the research interests of uh, people involved with the, this, this particular project. Um, so it's a little, you know, it's, it's low hanging fruit, it's easy. And uh, I just get something on the Akashic record there, you know, of, of the kind of things that are going on here. And little do we know, this is a hot topic. We ended up being number one on Amazon. We put it up there on Amazon and, and there it is, it's, you got number one new release. How do you like that? I'll leave, hey. So, yeah, so if everybody, oh, where's, oh, I don't have it. All right, we'll do it in the next one. Okay, no, I'm good. All right, so I, so I looked into what this Purva Paksha, if, if we can use it, or what we can do, or, you know, how, how to deal with the Purva Paksha of the term Purva Paksha. Um, and I uh, looked it up initially on the online accessible Monier Williams Sanskrit Dictionary, and there was a lot of stuff here that first half of the lunar month didn't quite work, uh, first half of the year, actionable. But this last one, all right, it's getting warm. First objection to an assertion in any discussion, the prima, I can't pronounce Latin any more than I can do Sanskrit, view or argument of any question and have some references. So, all right, that sounds... Okay, maybe there's something there. I gotta, I, I couldn't, I, I gotta have something I can anchor it with, um, besides that it just sounded like you know a certain type of pizza or something you know that, that I heard way to mention. Um, but then I looked it up on Wikipedia, you know, and boy, if it's on Wikipedia, it's happening. So uh, they they had a whole article on, on Purva Paksha on Wikipedia. Who knew? I mean, that's almost as amazing as you released the book and it's number one on Amazon. So they had this whole article on, on uh, Wikipedia. Sometimes, uh, also, anyways, uh, literally a form position of view. It it's a tradition in debates of Indian logicians. So this is, this is getting a little warmer. It involves the building of a deep familiarity with the opponent's point of view before criticizing it. So that's, that's getting uh, a little warmer. Um, and it goes Wikipedia, you know, to me, I, I tell students, right, that's like uh, if you meet a graduate student or maybe a professor at a bar, not that I would, but uh, if you did, and, 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 you know, they have a lot of interesting things to say, but you don't know how many beers they have, you know, so you might want to then go and, and kind of reference it, you know, and make sure. And the nice thing about Wikipedia is they do have a lot of references so then you can track it to where, where they're making these statements. Um, but at any rate, Anyways, I started doing my research, and I found that that Vueta actually published a definition of this in one of his books, uh, uh, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, uh, from about ten or fifteen years ago. So here was a definition of what this this term meant, 
uh, and it seemed that Awaita had been in the talk referring to almost a tradition, but here it's more of a term. It's a standard technique, technique for refuting rival views uh, for the commentators and is to first introduce the view of the opposing school called the Purva Paksha, um, uh, critique it, then establish the perspective of his own school, the Siddhanta, and, and then this was kind of neat. Naturally, the presentation of the Purva Paksha, the opponent's view was sometimes selective or partial. Uh, I can't imagine that, but sometimes that might happen, but the ensuing discussion will provide a flavor, and this is within in Indian tradition, the ensuing discussion will provide a rich flavor or a flavor of the rich debate and a keen dialectical interaction between schools, you know, that force the theologians or the thinkers or whoever is debating to fine tune their perspectives um, and kept the Indic intellectual traditions alive and fertile throughout the centuries. So, you know, we're talking about, you know, these different points of views, the churning of these points of views is what enriches the tradition and keeps it alive. It doesn't turn into a dead letter tradition. So, you know, again, this is really starting to get warm for me. This is kind of a cool, cool term. Um, and then this is from Fritz Stahl. I found him. He's another uh, big uh, kahuna, yeah. if that's the right word, in, uh, in, in, in Hindu study, Indology. I'm not part of, you know, he knows how to speak Sanskrit, right? He's good. Um, I'm working on the English. Um, but I think he was one of the founders of the, uh, uh, the, the, the South and Southeast Asian Studies School at Berkeley, UC Berkeley, which is one of the most prestigious. And I do think he had some interactions with the devotees back in the day because I found him in the database. In the database. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? I didn't go look that yeah. far. Yeah, because the. Yeah, because uh, what I tripped into is, is uh, they were talking about it when they were talking about GTU. You know, I, I just, man, you know, I was, you know, just came up. I was doing my, yeah, so he's had some, uh, we've, we've crossed paths in this lifetime that he no longer shares with us, but uh, maybe we'll see him again. Uh, and, okay, but he's, I'm sure a wonderful guy. Um, anybody here meet him? No, for previous generation. Okay, anyways, this was his best definition. It was slightly different than uh, Advaita's. In many Indian Shastra works, the alternate views are referred to by such expressions as Paksha, Pakshana, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in the later commentary, in the commentary literature, the argument proceeds according to a fixed pattern, starting with Purva Paksha, the initial view, seems to shift a little bit here, set up by the Uttara Paksha, the counter view, until the Siddhanta is reached. This is, re so this process of, of exchange, intellectual exchange, identified with the actual tradition we're claiming to be representing and presenting to the grand world out there. Um, this tradition is reminiscent of Hegel's dialectic. And he was referring to a fellow historian of India. Uh, uh, she noted uh, that the method, it's not a metaphysical thing that they're just doing here. You know, they're not just quoting Shastra, you know, and throw, lobbing sound bites, you know, like, you know, verses at each other. On the contrary, this, this Siddhanta, this debate, you know, they're also engaging logical means um, and 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 it's a little bit uh, you know they're, they're serious it's, 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 it's you know the, whoever wins it's the final and then at least for the time being and, and uh, you know we we've heard you know Prabhupada some at least I recall hearing um, you know sometimes they'd have these big debates so like almost sporting events where you know if you if you lose out in this debate then you you know offer your specs to the the winning guru and the students and you know anyway so they they, they took these the uh, these are intellectual these are games intellectuals played within the tradition. Um, okay, the, here, what's this from? And this is from a more recent scholar, uh, Rakesh Pandey. I did look him up. He's a serious guy. Uh, he's involved in, with an institute in India that is, um, uh, that's all I remember. But, he, you know, he's, he, no, he, he's, you know he's, he's an active scholar. Uh, so he, he did a whole, uh, uh, found his essay on this term, uh, the Purva Paksha Modern Indian Thought is entitled the excerpt. So this is something that's discussed among scholars. The term Purva Paksha is drawn from the Indian philosophical method or argumentation of Vastu Sacha, where it denotes the available views under consideration to one's own or rival tradition. So one feature of this tradition identified with the tradition we are identifying with is um, they, you know, they're not just, you know, uh, playing, uh, you know, give the dog a bad name and then hang them uh, games here. You know, they're actually, okay, I'll put it in Boston street language. If you, you got to get in someone's head before you mess with it, you know? So, you know, you got, you got to, you know, you got to understand, you know, your opposing point of views, 
and 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 debate with it you know and they knew that there's nothing new under the sun man there were boston brahmins back in you know the, um okay anyway and debate so they have debating manuals the naya system you know this purva you know ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. And then he goes on and do some other thinking or you know again this is also kind of nice where one is accountable to one's critical addressee so you're not just like you know whoever yells loudest yells best you know this is a certain accountability here in this mode the thinking is a systematic mode of intellection in which one builds in him or whom is that word so this is where you know hermeneutical context with a community of people holding shared presence. All right, this is, uh, Radhika Raman has to translate that stuff. Okay, so I looked up, um, so I looked up what this Vada Shastra stuff, you know, the debating manuals, and this is from the Oxford Dictionary of Hinduism. They, they were debating manuals that lay down and agreed upon procedures and rules for conducting a scholastic or philosophical debate returned to his Vada. So this was part of the tradition, you know, where, you know, this is part of the tradition we're allegedly representing. Um, aspiring to. Pandey also says Prabhupada can be treated as creating the grounds for self-reflexivity and it's premised on the acknowledgement of shared conflicting and even alien elements in conversation, like in alien identities, I guess. No, 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 yeah, I mean opposing views, various point of views. They're engaging with these these views. And then this fellow writes, uh, uh, oh, this is all from the introduction of the first volume of Prabhupada that I happen to know who wrote. Um, and you can get it online in the Look Inside feature. But, uh, all right, uh, Pandey writes that while Purva Paksha has been largely known as the central method of argumentation in India intellectual traditions, the, you know, its, it's operation in, in this philosophical knowledge system exchange illustrate what could be called a method of dialectical hermeneutics. And, uh, you know, we've been discussing that in some of these earlier talks as well. And fortuitously, I got it in the PowerPoint here too. Um, Concerning Pandey's, you know, I'm pulling this out, uh, his comparison of Purvapaksha to a method of dialectical hermeneutics, I found Gadamir, uh, you know, Hans George Gadamir, um, that um, Maharaj uh, brought up as a, as a leading scholar in this Western uh, German sympathetic type uh, uh, tradition. Uh, she, you know, this, this person did a, a, a biography of him. And so she's, you know, German, uh, dialectic, it's, you know, it's pedestrian, meaning it refers to this tension between opposites. Uh, and, you know, and, and churning that to, to get to as, as a method of, of a logical approach to truth, at least as an aspirational um, 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 framing of it. But then she talks about Gadamer's specific definition or the way he framed her, uh, dialectical hermeneutics. So his hermeneutics seeks not only to preserve oppositional terms, but also to reveal such a tension as to as productive to the very process of understanding. So sometimes having opposing points of view is not the bug, it's the feature. And it churns the process to get deeper into the topic and it forces you to be self-reflective. What is it? Actually, I was doing a, there's a saying, sometimes the best sermons are the bad sermons, <laughs> you know, because you listen to this, it's like, what the hell is he talking about? Or her, no, no, just the hymns. And you know, what the hell is he talking about? And then it forces you to think, you know, how would I say it? And how do you counter that? You know, forces you to go deeper. So, um, yeah, so that's that's something. Um, and also, I would like to say uh, a, a, a program like this, you know, it's it's designed not to just come with a set of, you know, some programs can be designed like that. But this one, it's more like we're facilitating people to share their research and, and find common interests and get maybe into little purple punches, you know. But, um, you know, but something like when you're trying to design a museum, that's a different exercise. And um, then, you you know, and we have a committee that's doing that where you try to boil it down into a message that can work for a public audience. You know, so there's different gears here. You know, it's now we're shooting baskets and now we're throwing the football. And, you know, so you know, all things can be included in Krishna consciousness. Um, all right. And then here I also found a Purva Paksha uh, thing here, little uh, discussion. This is from a, a popular, uh, a public intellectual. He's considered a nationalist uh, Hindu type guy, but he is uh, engaged and he is commented on by the Academy. And, and uh, uh, he wrote a book, uh, Being Different, an Indian Challenge to Western Universalism. So he's pushing back against the sort of dominant Western framed scholarly approach to um, everything, but specifically the Indian traditions. 
Um, and then he had a, a whole chapter, his first chapter, Purva Paksha Reversing the Gate. So he's trying to take this Purva Paksha type process and, uh, hey, let's use it with our framework, you know, and, and, and look at you, you know, too, you know, as opposed to you just sort of patronizingly tell us, you know, from uh, outside the tradition what you think about us. And, and sure, I guess you're right. Um, but he's, he's a little, uh, you know, provocative and, and that's all well and good. But he had an interesting definition of this. He, he's more seemed to expand Purva Paksha the term into the whole tradition, you know, so I, I, I worked with that. Was, so it's a dialectical approach again. You know, you take the, the, the argument to this and that and go back and forth. Purva Paksha tradition required any debater first to argue from the perspective of his opponent in order to test the validity of his understanding of the opposing view. And that sort of reminded me of like Krishna in the, in the Govardhan Hill pastime where he's, you know, arguing, you know, against the worship of the demigods the, as the purport, just worship, you know, just engage in bhakti. But first he argued all the arguments, why you should, you know, worship Indra. <laughs> then he turns around and defeats it, you know. So, you, you know, so this is part of the tradition. Uh, you know, you have to understand, you know, what it is that you are debating. Or, or arguing, you know, and what do we argue? We're not just arguing to win. Oh, here we go. Let's let's keep it. Such debates, uh, you know, encourage individuals to maintain flexibility, perspective, and honesty. And then here, in this way, the dialectical process shows a genuine, far-reaching shift in the individual. Um, yeah, and he had some other quotes too about you know being self-reflective again, like we heard. So, anyways, this all this all sounded pretty engaging. It's a kind of cool name. Sounds Italian. You know, seems like a good name for a pizza, the Purvapaksha pizza, you know. Uh, anyway, so I went with that and we said, what? I'm down to three minutes already. You're right. Um, yeah, so uh, we do have them. Um, oh, so Purvapaksha fine tuning opposing views. I got the fine tuning and opposing views from Awaita's, you know, uh, a presentation and Purvapaksha I got from Awaita. Blame him. Um, yeah, and, and anyways, you can read the whole thing online or buy a book. And so that's why we use that book. But I do have two minutes yet uh, uh, or so left. Where does the time go? Look at that book. All right, get out your phones and scan that thing. And <laughs> you can, yeah, this is the new book. And Varoda Parihara, it's another term, you know, and, and we use that to engage this whole, uh, you know, uh, and we use Vedic cosmography in a modern context. So we're sort of trying to be, be a bit of a follow-up to Sadapuda's work and, and to just sort of bring this kind of energy to these debates about how to present and deal with uh, Vedic cosmography in a modern context. Not that the cosmography is now modern, but we are discussing it in a modern context or a current context. So you can't get around that, um, at least for the moment. <laughs> I think that's a joke. Anyway, so we got an introduction there. Um, uh, 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 Christian Shetra wrote a, a wonderful introduction and, and uh, you know, forward. forward with an E. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, huh? Because originally we were doing it without the E, like forward, you know, Maharaj, Maharaj definitely caught us on that. Um, you know, we got some feedback from Adwaiti, wrote a little something, we, you know, and anyways, you know, we got, we got some nice feedback. Here's a little bit. Yeah, anyways, it's on the back shelf. You can go look it up there. Uh, Varoda. Anyways, the term Varoda Parihara is, 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 there was a tradition of discussing the, the tension between observable astronomy. There was, I got a little excited yesterday uh, about a certain issue, but th there's a long tradition. They knew all about observable astronomy. There are some of the leading people in the history and philosophy, uh, uh, history of mathematics and astronomy. They knew, um, you know, the motion, they mathematically quantified. You need it for astrology. You need it to do, well, the astrology charts, but you just need it for dating, for calendars, for rituals. They knew how to chart the motion of the planets. And they, and because they're in India, and they, they were Vedic Brahmins, and some of the Vaishnavas, they knew this is a little bit different than the Puranas, the fifth canon. So, all right, I'm getting there, I hope, God willing. And so, I got one minute. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this, and and then and then they knew the Puranas, they knew the observable astronomy. This is not a new discussion. That way, we put this and it's term Varoda Parihara, reconciling differences and 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 revisiting because we're reinvigorating that. And then I just want to say my last minute, there's there's texts of this discussion. Uh, Surya Das and Gyanaraj from the time of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, this guy, Surya Das' son, uh, wrote a whole chapter called Removing the Contradictions Between the Observable Astronomy, Jyotisha, and the Puranas. And he used the term Viroda Parihara. There's this other guy, Kaval Aram, chief astronomer for Jai Singh. This is, he was 
This work was uh, uh, early 1700s. He used the, his, in English, removal of the disagreement between the Bhagavad Quran and the astronomy concerning the spheres of the earth. Um, and he used the term Baroda Parihar in his title. Uh, K. Bilarm also proposed is, uh, I only heard a reference to this. We should get this text translated. Apparently it's available in Spanish. Um, no, Sanskrit. Um, that, you know, he's, that, you know the, he's, he's framing the Puranic universe as, as described. Uh, uh, you know, the, the, the dimensions given there. And then he's also transposing the uh, known uh, 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 mathematics uh, dimensions of, of, of the, uh, the visible orbiting solar system type universe that we're more familiar with. And, you know, he's, he's, he's apparently some description of how, you know, the orbits pass through the Puranic. Anyway, there was some sense that they may share on some level of experience a shared space. And, and we don't really have the text yet. There's a reference to it, but it reminded me of... Uh, some work Sadapudu was doing, where he found some correspondence between the observable universe mathematics and the dimensions given that we have, and the mathematics and dimensions of, of the, the rings of Bumandala. And, uh, it, it, you know, it's interesting, as Sadapudu point, pointed it out. So that's what I got, Broda Parihara, uh, Purva Paksha, get them at your local Amazon dealer.